Welcome one and all to the final day of NACL here for the spring split regular season. I'm Mazel. I'm joined for the first time by Hawk and I couldn't be more excited, my friend. Welcome to the season and welcome to the cast. You ready for a good day? Oh, my friend, I am so excited for a great day because we got Challengers League. It's the last day of regular season. We've come so far and the train stops here before we get to our crazy, crazy playoffs and what an honor and a pleasure it is to be on the stream alongside you. It's crazy. We've had so much fun with Fearless, and now it feels like we're getting to that next level with playoffs because Fearless becomes even more important when we get to those oh, longer yeah. best of. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Speaking of some Fearless and speaking of some fun, let's go ahead and take a look at our standings here and take a look at the league as a whole coming into the last day. There are still some serious standings implications coming into our final best of threes here. Yeah, even though our playoffs are locked, Lit Mirage unfortunately locked down in the promotion tournament. There are some serious implications, as you said, Mazel, particularly in our first series of the day. And even that top one spot that we thought FlyQuest had locked up. Well, not so fast. FlyQuest looking to go double first places in LCS and NACL, but if they lose today they will not secure that they will be second or third maryville will be very happy for that so they'll be rooting for the downfall of fly quest meanwhile on the other side the promo teams have been locked so lit in ma mirage will be out and uh dsg aoe the rest will be in playoffs so we'll see how things go for them to finish out the season i know aoe have a big swing here either fourth or eighth possible for them today so let's take a look at the schedule that we have in front of us here aoe versus dsg kicking us off and that's a big one again that big swing but dsg also trying to gain some pride going into the playoffs and then mirage alliance versus FlyQuest challengers it might be a topsy-turvy table side matchup but uh it should be a fun one if the underdogs can take it oh it absolutely will be but just to give you an idea of how close the middle of the standings are for our nacl league here uh dsg and aoe if aoe wins they will be fourth if they lose they will be eighth I mean, such an insane jump, and it just goes to show that in this middle of the pack, every single best of three matters an immense amount. It does. Let's go ahead and take a look at the teams that we'll have on the docket here first up and foremost, because I, I got to say, not only are these graphics amazing, but this team has started to kick up a little bit of dust, and I think there's been some back and forth in terms of how confident and consistent they can be, but I was talking to Tenacity, and he's saying, you know, they are feeling confident going into playoffs. They want to build off that here on the last day. And such a big deal for this team to make the playoffs, right? Because this was a team that a lot of people had at the top of their power rankings coming into the year, and then they struggled. And they struggled a lot, but they're locked in now. This series against AoE only playing for some more favorable seeding, and they really are going to want that because this is the reigning championship uh organization and even though young is the only returning member there in the mid lane i still think that disguise is a team that wants to show and these players are all players that want to show that they can compete at the top of challengers yeah they are scaling apparently by tenacity's words and now on the other side aoe a big day for them a lot more of a swing in the standings than i would say on the other side of things but they are going to look to represent with a interesting bot lane uh that in 2v2s, finds a lot of success, but trying to get that out of lane and trying to find consistency for this whole roster is the key. And I want to zoom in on that word, Mazel, because consistency for AoE has unfortunately just not been there. Wixie and Breezy have been fantastic, but on the rest of the map, it's been a bit all over the place, and it feels like they've had great performances. And honestly, I think players like Onat have continued to play at a really solid level for the Challengers League when they are on. But when they're not, that's when AoE struggles to bring it all the way together. And part of the reason why they've only been able to net three series wins so far despite having such a favorable game score to the effect of hey if they win today they're all the way up to fourth and that would be a big swing in terms of who you're facing uh in our playoffs where it could be a bit important in that regard we have some really dominant teams in the league itself but uh i think tonight today it's about trying to figure out what wixie and breezy can play and playing around that in some ways i know we've had some uh some wonky picks up there in the top lane, some solo bolos going his way, so we'll see. But we're getting into game one now, so it shouldn't be much longer until we figure out who's going to be taking that leading foot in this best of three. DSG on the blue side, AoE on the red side. Kalista first ban there by DSG. Yeah, not wanting to let those dominant 2v2s go over. Wixie, Breezy, as we've already alluded to, they have been so 
good together. The bot lane of Cloud9 Amateur reunited here in Challengers once again. Senna getting removed as well. A lot of power up and available. And there's a reason why Blue Side has a favorable win right here in the Challengers League throughout the entire season. There's just so many power picks. Smolder, another one that I look at. <laughs> Other things, uh, the Vi, we've seen highly prized in the jungle. Yeah. Orianna, I do want to point out as well, here on 14.5, Young's most played champion on the split. Eight games on Azir, not activated due to bugs. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the mid laners around the world are uh, are hurting in that regard as Azir was yeah. primarily. As the viewers, the are we really hurting though, Lennon? Like, we no, finally get no, some different mid. All. Yeah, I'm happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing like, Azir's cool, please. but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Uh, we did get that Zin Zhao locked away against Rose Thorn as well as the Varus. So take away some more of that 2v2 power there in, in regards to the bot lane. The Ash Smolder with a follow-up banned by AoE. I wonder if we do just get some of that lock-in of what's left on the table for bot lane in the first phase. Okay, you know, I know never to get baited by Hovers, but that's the kind of thing that makes me laugh. I mean, I, I would not expect, you know, Karma is a power pick, uh, Lucian and yep. Nami Milio, those kind of things. You got a Felios Milio. There's still a lot of stuff up and available that could be traded back and forth. We mentioned the Orianna already. Huey has also been an option into the Karma that we have seen cropping up if it is to be a Karma mid. But of course, part of the power of that first pick from DSG is that it could go to either mid or support or even top if you really <laughs> wanted to. <laughs> a lot of flexibility there for sure. See if they're cooking. Another pick that's uh, been able to rise a lot in prominence is the uh, Talia here. Because the Azir is gone, you love that matchup not being there. But it is locked in with some flexibility available for AoE as well. Yeah, and I like this pick a lot. One of Onat's most played on the split so far. And it just plays to side lanes. And we talk about Wixie yep. and Breezy have been such a point of power here for AoE. And... When Zamudo's on, this guy is a carry player. You know, he is completely willing to throw down the Yone, uh, the Jax, those kind of things, the Twisted Fate, and really try to take over the game. And I think AoE functions best when Rose Thorn and Onat are able to link up with a strong gank duo like this Talia and Volibear and move to those sides that hopefully have favorable matchups and are yeah. able to break those open. I've really enjoyed the uh, prominence of the Volley Bear recently. Uh, I was in a couple of our players' streams uh, during the week, and you know, a lot of Volley Bears being played solo queue by a lot of our guys. So a lot of fun to see that would come through. Also, kind of a, a little niche classic uh, a little bit in our league, but also for Rose Thorn. The Aphelios Nautilus, though, locked in, which means that Karma primarily probably going to be in the mid lane, but also a pretty good uh, stable bot lane. Yeah, and it's something, honestly, stable across the board for DSG, right? <laughs> Young not getting on something too flashy. I feel like this is a player that made his name on some of those flashier champions, but it, it's not really been Young split so far after a breakout season in 2023. Uh, and on the, on the Karma, he'll be useful, right? And that's the most yeah. important thing. It's impossible to not do something when you're playing Malignant's Karma mid. And Minui getting on the Aphelios as well. This is a player that we oftentimes associate with some of the funkier picks, but he is a player that has said he still wants to be known as someone that can be a big time traditional marksman carry and speaking of Wixie, we talked a lot about this player already getting on the hyper carry yep. jinx we're going back in the meta uh except that azir is not here but i like the aphelios jinx matchup it's something we've seen consistently in the past be a dominant uh bot lane focus at least for both teams but gives Wixie a lot of upside and especially maybe some more playability for Breezy if he can find some good 2v2s with that. But in the second phase, we already got that Kindred ban as well as the Wukong for AoE on the DSG side of things. They take away the Braum, so they want to not give Jinx a really strong 2v2 in that duo. But the Atros, the final ban. Yeah, denying some of the best carry junglers away from parry to pair alongside that Karma, I think it's very, very smart. Things like Lee Sin <laughs> up and available for him, though, if you wanted to go for it. But for AoE, I love this because they have guaranteed support counter and top lane counter. Counter. And we talked about having this gank mid jungle, Talia mm -hmm. and Volibear moving towards sides. I, this feels like a quintessential AoE draft so far. Somebody like the Rel going to be very solid in the 2v2, able to break a lot of the shielding that's going to come through for DSG. And the question remains, what does DSG go for? We talked about things like Lee Sin, Vi we mentioned way earlier in the draft as options. And for Tenacity, it has been seven games of Aatrox, four games of Cassante, and then a bunch of one-offs, and he's not really had much success on a lot of it. He's 0-4 in those Cassante games, for example, Lennon. So, Gragas, I mean, it just feels like, okay, I'm just going to be safe and not risk too much in this lane. 
I'm curious as well what the spacing provides with this composition. Uh, maybe a little bit of setup, maybe a little bit of trolling. I don't know. We'll see, uh, especially because some stability, again, back to the conversation of that for DSG as a whole, is there with the Gragas. I think you can play a little bit safer. I would love to see the Poppy for Perry, but it is going to be the choice of the Jarvan. So setting up a little bit of a hot pot without some heat here. What if there's a poppy top angle for Zamudo, honestly, against Jarvan, Gragas, Nautilus? Uh, I don't know how the matchup is into the Gragas in particular. It's not one that we've seen too much, but Zamudo has played a game of it on the split. Uh, I mean, other options up and available for him. Rumble is probably just pretty good here. Maybe overloads you on magic damage a little too much. Um, I mean, I wonder, like, could you go Malphite against a pretty <laughs> Aphelios focused composition? And okay, it's R5 the poppy, poppy, there baby. it is. The poppy toppy. As, uh, it does provide a lot of that disengage, but also just staying power, sticking power for AOE, which I think is going to be really nice for them. Their front to back is very impressive, but they also have ways of picking apart the team fights. Yeah, and both these compositions are very team fight oriented, right? This is not about side lanes. It's all yeah. on the five on five. AOE does have some ability, though, to move Onat around the map with the Weaver's Wall, and that's something we've already highlighted. We want to see them play towards these sides. I think, in particular, Wixie and on the opposite side, Minui, looking like they have to be the main carries. Minui maybe having a bit more safety with the Karma movement speed and the shields on his side. AOE, they have a little bit more playmaking in the early stages of the game potentially get a gold advantage and just run this one over. There's a lot of pressure on the shoulders of uh, Wixie at least here as a primary carry and uh, one of the real damage dealers it feels like for AoE and that's where like the conversation of the kind of different strategies we're getting going into game number one here is curious because the mid jungle duo is becoming really important but it's a little bit of a different factor right a lot of synergy needed between both sides but that forward engage, the, the parry versus Rose Thorn matchup is going to lead a lot of that bridge building to the mid game that these teams are going to be looking for going to objectives. Definitely. That, that bridge building is going to be really important, especially when, you know, if you lose your AD right or your AD falls too far behind, like, who who does damage in either of these team comps, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, Talia, okay, yeah, Malignant's Karma's annoying, but it's really going to be about these guys in the later stages of the game. And honestly, Lennon, when we're looking at building those bridges, We've already built up the mid jungle a little bit for the AOE side. And I think on both sides, this is going to be really important. Whichever mid laner can get prio, get first move to yeah. these early fights and get their damage online early enough before everyone becomes super tanky could just give the lead that you need to take over the game. Well, we're in game one now of our final day of the regular season. Should be a lot of fun. AOE again, the stakes are high for them. Finishing fourth if they win, finishing eighth if they lose. The SG on the other side, a little bit different of a shakeup, seventh or eighth, but trying to uh, maintain a little bit of pride to finish out the season. I know Tenacity was talking a little bit about the, their scaling nature going to playoffs, his belief in the team as a whole, but they're going to need some of that teamwork, some of that synergy today with these compositions. I mean, hey, to be fair, DSG, they scaled into playoffs last split too when they ended they up winning did. the whole thing. Now, they weren't 8th, 7th, you know, it was a little bit better for them <laughs> in the regular season, but it was still an up and down split in 2023 summer. So maybe the, there's your Copers. Oh, Onet. Breezy is there, but they get a huge chunk on Onet. Onet's just about to go down to first blood. My God, DSG, turn it on and first blood to Young. Well, if you want to talk about mid jungle AOE, they try to get a bit of information down, but a nice position from Poom lands the dredge line and gets Young going. And Look, Karma, you don't think of as a, her as a hyper carry, and she's not. However, if she gets ahead of the curve, those mantra cues can chunk you for a whole hell of a lot. As oh no, Ona even they just checked didn't know the he push, was there. but Poom, he backstepped. He didn't get hit. Yeah, it's a bit of a rustic. I love that Poom throws up the thumbs up. He's like, I know oh. we got you, bro. And the thing is. When we were talking about those mid jungles, there is a different idea of how they want to approach it. Onat wants to get to side lanes. Young just wants to find parry. Now, Young can easily have advantage in the mid lane to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, any sort of kill going down in the mid lane, you get an extra amplifying tome or something like that. So then you're able to push the waves better, and it totally changes the dynamics. Both junglers, though, despite the first blood, right, we're going to have a normal early game. It didn't disrupt the individual lane states too much, at least early on. Young didn't get to take a base, and... Perry, Rose Thorn, starting on their red sides, it will be a mismatch clear. I do favor this for AoE being able to potentially play around their bottom side early on. However, I do think there is a relative amount of safety to be found. 
looks like we got the even 2v2 in bottom side as well. So things going, at least in levels, uh, to start it off. But the push will end up bouncing back, maybe just in time for Rosethorn to get a little bit finicky with it. The crash in top side maybe signals DSG to make a play on the Zamudo, but he will play pretty safely off of that one. Yeah, very defensive dive cover here from Perry, not wanting to let Tenacity go down. I mean, you can see the CS 18 to it was four at the time. Now Tenacity able to clear up that creep wave. If he died could have been disaster and that does go to show that DSG does not actually know where Rosethorn is on the map. He's finishing up his full clear. Of course, Volibear going a lot faster than the Jarvan in the early stages of the game. And yeah. both these champions have pretty spectacular early games. I love the uh, little efficiency parry, just making sure everything's still around so he can trade his health bar to the wolves and then keep going. Now, Rosethorn back on the prowl, looking to cross map on the other Ooh. side and get this scuttle crab but will be on vision i wonder if they can even go for an invade probably not because top wave not really pushing in their favor zamudo has to go answer that but i like this a lot from rose sword hey that's the information that onet died yeah. for man he got there that ward go. down they knew parry would be on the top side rose thorn just leveraging that faster clear and I, for Rosethorn, I, I still hold to it, even though we have a lot of doubt, and I'll talk about it in just a bit after we get a 2v2 Breezy missing the Shattering Strike there is a little bit hurtful. Wixie taking a pretty heavy trade on the other end of that one. But I still hold to it that uh, Rosethorn has one of the biggest brains in terms of early pathings for junglers, and uh, we saw a little bit of that. He will end up having a skirmish parry out, but the nice back timing does get that. Now, Perry just turns his ire onto Onad here. The root's going to connect, but they're under tower. Seismic shove on a two here, too. They get the sky splitter on top of it. Young's a little bit worse for wear. They're trying to run away. Perry goes Perry? for it. Perry is slinging his sword. He slays the beast of Onat. The Sky Whoa! Splitter is just not in time, and Young gets his second kill of the game. It's 3-0 for DSG. What a 2v2 for DSG. I mean, this I thought it was just a prank, bro, going for a little bit of damage onto Onat, forcing him out of the lane with no flash. But with the flick back, this looks so good for AoE, and you can see the burst that comes through from the Volibear, but... The cooldown's just a little bit too long. Perry gets the flag and drag back up into the minion wave, and then Rose Thorn not getting the sky splitter. The minions, they weren't able to body block for him. Young even gets a blue buff off of it, and now this mid jungle that we said needed the bridge AoE into the mid game is behind, and DSG is in an excellent spot. And that's the thing. I, I feel like AoE fell for the trap of. Perry and Young are a great 2v2. We said in the in the beginning, right? Onat wants to get to side lanes. He wants to get combined with like a, a four-man gank or something in the side lane. Young and Perry just want to fight together. They do so beautifully. Perry with the decision making was so big. And now they just have presence on the map to force Rosethorn's hand. Rosethorn does get one of the grubs to try to deny the Take big stacking. But he can't take them all. Young is able to harass him off. Tenacity walking over as well, forcing the Volibear back off. Full information as to where the big bear is clearing. And I mean, I, I want to point out, you know, for as much as DSG has struggled this year, Lennon, we know how good all of these players are. They have each been at the top of Challengers League at a one or another point in their careers, many of them just as recently as last split. It's just been how they've played together where they've really faltered. And I think moments like that, you can see these players are still really good winning those super close 2v2s and playing the limits. We see some of that uh, togetherness that we saw Fear yeah. play so well with, with Manui and Perry come over to DSG here. And it's been a really nice transition. See some of those bright moments, not the best season so far, but we get a little minute moments as Dragon is getting taken by DSG to further their advantage here on the map. This is one of the most solid early games we've seen from DSG so far this split. Because even in their wins, they've been a little bit chaotic, maybe, shall we say? Uh, like, <laughs> a lot of kills across the map. And hey, there's nothing wrong with the chaos. We love that here in NACL. But commit yeah, to the bit. absolutely. You got to commit to the bit. Exactly. In DSG, they're not afraid to do it. However, there's nothing wrong with a little cleanliness as well, proving, hey, we can play <laughs> a slow, calculated early game, especially with the team comps that we do have drafted. It can be a big question of like, do you buy into the chaos or do you try to clean it up? Because I think that was the question we wanted to ask coming to DSG today. And I, I know a lot of this the play... chaos. I was <laughs> yeah. born in it. Molded exactly. <laughs> you could say that about a lot of teams. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. That's the beauty of a developmental league. Now, we do have a redeploy back onto the top side of the map for the rest of these telegrubbies as uh, Perry will be starting those ones up. 
going to be able to take two of the grubs more than likely, as well as the early dragon stacking. And if bot lane is going to be a focal point, getting those ones stacking up, it's going to feel so incredibly good for DSG. Especially, you know, if Wixie's not able to really get ahead of the curve in this game. Yo, 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 tenacity. He tries to go for it. Zavudo using that step past presence to get a pop the ulti too. All right, nice ult. Zamudo able to get away, but Rose Thorn Onat. Again, I don't know if you want this fight necessarily. They are weaving it really well right now, and Onat's weaving those rocks right into the back of Parry. Rose Thorn doesn't have the Sky Splitter just yet, and DSG make it away. Man, Karma is so annoying. <laughs> like, it's, this yeah. champion, there's a reason why she was first picked. Just throwing a shield down, chunking everybody to half HP with the Qs, and it's only eight minutes into the game. Nice take from Parry, able to get those two Void Grubs, and... Yeah, as we were saying, I mean, this pace of the game going to feel super good for DSG because Wixie's not able to get ahead. We talked about how important these marksmen are. DSG, they might be able to force AoE to take fights before their marksman is able to come online and actually contest. And I love this idea, at least from DSG, because in the past, I know Perry has been very vocal about how he wants to play towards leadership. He wants to be kind of that leading voice to bring everybody together and go for plays. And I think we've seen a resurgence of that here just because of the nature of their composition with the uh, the Karma Jarvan bot or, uh, combo. But now that we want to try to maybe see bot lane be picked up a little bit more, I, I want to see some transition of vision down this way. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we've hardly had the camera go down this direction. I feel like this is the first move from either team towards the bottom side. I don't think there's a dive to be had here. I mean, Onat's out of mana. This is just a pressure play oh, as okay, Minui. All right. No big deal. <laughs> no it's big deal. Fine. Walk yeah. away calm, cool, and collected. Uh, I they gotta play. do see when we were looking, though, Minui has burned his flash and cleanse. So there was a little bit of something. Uh, that happened down there as well, but I think more so particularly looking now with the mid game coming up on the horizon another dragon in a couple minutes a very quiet game for AoE. Do we need to see a tick up in pressure for them? Oh, absolutely. Especially, I want to see more moves just like we, what we saw a couple seconds ago. Because Rose Thorn, Onat, they have the ultimates online. They can turn off the towers, wall them in, and take them down. And Minui has zero escapes without those summoner spells up and available. So, Onat having push on this wave. AoE is going to have a move timer here if they choose to take it over DSG. Down on the bottom side, they are playing nice and respectfully, taking another base, not wanting to uh, let anything go awry on that side. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be the first one to uh, let the bot lane kind of go crazy. Tenacity going to use the cask again onto Zamudo, trying to force the ulti out, but also just trying to force the 1v1. Breezy going for a little bit of vision play here. Manui playing up as well. Does get the ward over the wall there. The 1v1 on the top side going a little awry. But there is Perry pathing up this way. We'll be spotted Ooh. out on a ward as he comes around the wall here. Zamudo knows what's coming, but he might not be able to stop it anyways. Here comes the Keeper's Verdict, and I'm sure of it, as he's going to try to buy time. He can't even use it. He flashes wow. and dies anyways. Nice juggling of the turret by DSG. Perry is having a nice game so far, dropping the ultimate, waiting until after Zamudo had flashed with the steadfast presence expiring finds the flag and drag to get the kill and that was easy peasy lemon squeezy for yeah. the top side and nice macro play for dsg they know that aoe wants to focus on this bottom side of the map with those ultis in mid jungle and minui oh, okay he flashes that was actually pretty big now fight back there though but uh but yeah i I think the biggest thing is I can also see Zamuda's angle there, right? He feels like if he waits to flash, gets out, gets distance, and able to use the Keeper's Verdict. But uh, things just go the way of DSG, and now yeah. they have a one-item spike on that top side of the map. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, DSG, they were holding pocket aces, and all they had to do was not get bluffed out of the fight. Zamudo played his hand as well as he could, but the card did not fall his way. I don't think there was really much he could have done to get out of that one other than hope that DSG fumbled the bag. They did not. The groceries made it home intact. AoE will at least get a Drake off of it. But as I was saying before, I mean, DSG also did a great job of not allowing the cross map in the bottom. So I'm really impressed with the restraint yeah. we're seeing. And Tenacity, he's back at it again. Tenacity just wants that smoke from Zamudo, man. He's every time he has his ulti, he's like, let's trade. Let's see what happens. That dragon does go down, though, so we will get that trade as well. Uh, we actually see in the picture-in-picture picture the grubbies being taken by Perry. 
Oh, they Breezy find him. Breezy is in a lot of hurt. And he might be a metal horse, but he's been turned into some armor for DSG. Now, Manui gets completely caught in the end, and an excited Wixie takes the kill. Yeah, and that looked really good for DSG. They thought they had a freebie, found a penny in the middle of the street, but there was a, a goblin lurking in the sewers. It was a bear, actually. <laughs> Jumped out and mauled them, and the big oh, thing... Oh, God, you gotta watch for those. Yeah, I, I don't know. The bear in the sewer, those are... Dude, you see some wild things out here in LA. I, I gotta tell you, in, in, in Florida. <laughs> I didn't know we had bears in the sewer. I'm gonna go clog my, my toilets and stuff to make sure they don't come out. I don't know. Yeah, you heard a snake in the sink. Now get ready for... <laughs> anyway, I think we got a mid-play here. Rose Thorn is going to try to hunt down Young, but he's heading towards his friend and Perry. And now that's a really big seismic shove. Breezy's here as well. Perry just goes for the play. Perry's going for the hand play on Odat. And he gets him on a killing spree too. Sky Splitter comes win? down, saves Rose Thorn for a minute. That's why this duo is so strong. Young and Perry executing so well. Perry is just on fire, man. He has Odat and Rose Thorn's number and Breezy. Couldn't oh. do a damn thing. Nice ult. So nudo. Yeah. So, oh my god, it's so tense. Lennon, the pace of this game has simply exploded. We could take another look at this mid play. AoE goes for it, but Ona's not really in range to follow, and the Q expired. He flashes, but that's a regular auto attack, and all of a sudden, Ona at half HP, Rose Thorn not able to support. It looks like Perry might get one shot, but a great flash out of his own Cataclysm to avoid Breezy. And in the 2v2, the Karma and the Jarvan are just too far ahead. Rose Thorn doesn't have the cooldowns, and they clean up yet another two for zero. Dude, I'm just imagining Perry LeBron jamming his way to these kills. He's just all over the place. It's actually insane, and the duo is coming alive. As we see Wixie and Breezy, they're going to take a tier one or tier three, actually, in the side lane. That'll be first turret for AoE, so they will take a little bit of a chunk of that lead back. And Wixie is casually getting strong, right? Because before all that happened, he did pick up the 2v2 kill on bottom, and Minui actually didn't get the kill on the Breezy. So with the first tower as well, we do need to be wary of this Jinx, because for as well as DSG is playing, it was the big focal point of the draft, the bottom lanes. And Wixie is winning out on that side. We also see that Perry's uh, taking some more objectives here for DSG. They'll get the Rift Herald. He'll get his license to drive at some point. They have moved Manui to mid lane, so they might just look to break that down and transition map power there because we're starting to get to the point where team fights are going to be uh, a, a little bit less, fewer, and far between. Yeah, and I think this dragon fight in two minutes, I mean, honestly, I think either team could afford to drop it. And in fact, I would rather see whoever wants to, probably DSG because they have the Herald, try to actually just trade for gold on the map because it's only second dragon for either side i think we're expecting this to be a relatively slow game just based on the compositions and how things have gone so far so continuing to accelerate your control of the map get more gold get more items and get to the point where you can team fight faster than aoe would be the move and looking at those team fights a little bit more in depthly i think there's a little bit more standard front to back for dsg whereas aoe they have tools to try to pick apart one of those team fights especially with the keeper's verdict uh onat on the seismic shoves things like that the weaver's wall so it's going to be a lot more particular for aoe to approach these uh -oh. Speaking of approach you go <laughs> breezy's like oh, i gotta get out of here you heard of bear in a sewer now get ready for sunken oh, no. man in a bush says boom he doesn't find anything and Everyone's going to be fine, but I think Zamudo has to give this tower. So another nice move from DSG. They'll pick up the second outer without needing to invest the Herald. I would expect them to try to drop that mid now with that last outer tower there. Onat's in the side lane. He does have TP available. And, uh, just trying to take that outer tower himself there. Dragon is coming up in sub 40 seconds now. And I think presence around here from AoE is doing due gil diligence. Oh. As there's Perry with the driver's license right into the turret. And that should be the outer tower falling, so all outer tower is gone for AoE. More nice and clean macro from DSG, not dropping anybody unless, okay, hang on, uh -oh. Nasty under threat, but it's just first move. He's a big man, but he's got moves. He's got moves. He's trying to move on his Mudo. He's pushing him to the edge here so that DSG can get a collapse. They get the flag in drag. There's Mudo's going to flash out as well. TP coming in from Onad just in case. All right, I mean, that's Flash forced out of Zamudo. Now, Cataclysm is a pretty important cooldown, and Zamudo, he's a couple seconds away from the teleport for this dragon if they wanted to fight for it. No, AoE, okay, they won't. And DSG continuing to play nice and clean. Tenacity has been 
pretty good with the Bombas this game on the ultimate. Has only resulted in the one kill on Zamudo with the top dive, but <laughs> applying a lot of pressure in this matchup. Zamudo just feels like he's been uncomfortable in the way he's been able to play some of these 1v1s. Couple of those things, but I, I will say like some of the mechanics going back and forth have been really fun to watch. I, I'm interested though. He is cooking with the uh, clip side of on the poppy. Uh, going Wait, a little whoa, bit yeah, hang on. Profile. That's so spicy. I, I want to see how this plays out, especially because it's not going to be as fluid. I feel like as we normally see. It's also an energizer, uh, storm razor, Minui. I, I mean, storm razor is not a bad item at all, and it's definitely not bad on Aphelios, But I do feel like against. You know, pretty stalwart front line here for AoE. I'm actually a little bit surprised to not see, like, a Kraken Slayer or something like that coming out first. But, uh, yeah, we got the zoom in on Young. <laughs> That's a two-item karma. 302. I mean, DSG. Kai's sitting there like, yes, finally, the payoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's to our observer. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, hey, both, both work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um... Yeah, I mean, again, slow game, Lennon. There, there's not really much going on right now. I am I feel weird. Like, I was expecting this to be a bloodbath, and DSG coming out here game one looking clean. Yeah, and that's, uh, it was one of the questions. Like, which way are they going to go? Are they going to buy into the chaos? Are they going to try to clean it up yeah. and play together? So far, we've seen a lot of good play together. And it stems off of their composition. The yeah. fact that they went with a strong 2v2 in terms of the mid-jungle, the, I feel like, two big power points for the team, and the rest of the team has been being able to play around that. I mean, I've got to say, you, you mentioned Tenacity saying, hey, we're scaling into playoffs. These are the kind of games, even though if they win the series, they can only move into seventh place. That can be a huge confidence booster against some of the direct competition. We've already discussed how tight the middle of the pack is here in the Challengers League. AoE and DSG not wanting to find themselves at the bottom of that and wanting to prove that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody else in this league. Yeah. Especially not to mention, you get eight. Do not want to find oh, no. yourself against FlyQuest or Maryville as Mudo. He is probably dead. Zamudo, they're coming for you, man. Run away. You gotta make it. He's gonna make it. By time? You can do it. He can do it! He's a, oh no! He can't do it! He can't do it! He's getting taken out! Hawk, I don't know what's... Uh, Zamudo, he's trying to find his way out, but there's a big man coming for him, and his name's Perry. And that's the oh. fourth kill of the game for him. And the zoom in on the poor Christmas Poppy just laying on Summoner's Rift. Brutality. Unfortunately, the Batman, uh... He's not Santa Claus this game, Lennon. He's, uh... <laughs> he's, he's like Santa Claus from that... David Harbour movie that came out. I, it was like some action movie. I don't know. I never saw it. But a fight. Speaking of action movie, there's an yeah. action movie right here. Breezy needs to get out of the action movie. He's just dying to the bird. But cool guys don't look at explosions and DSG walk away from it. Yeah, low health bars though. I don't think there's a Baron start to be had off of this despite finding a couple kills. But it is more gold, more map control into their pockets without dropping any members. Wixie, two items. He is strong. Not strong enough to carry these fights quite yet. And Rose Thorn is on a secret agent mission. Tenassi is looking for him. On the hunt, you get a Ooh. hunter skin for a Around the Rosie? All right. Okay. <laughs> Playing around the death wall here. Uh, Wixie, oh, Wixie, no. Wixie, Wixie. That's a lot of trouble going his way. Perry sees it and goes for it. Tenassi trying bait? to angle around the side, but Perry got baited. And he just takes down by Wixie. Now the TP's coming in. Uh, DSG, they kind of get a re-engage there onto Wixie too. poop has got a heat-seeking anchor, but here comes the Mudo. He misses the Keeper's Verdict, but AoE now have an excited Wixie and a full steam head at their back. That's AoE turning around fights on DSG's backing. Mazel, what just happened? Wixie just got like a thousand gold off of... I'm giving him way, way, way too much credit because there's no way any of that was intentional. But like the most five head bait of the year, apparently, as DSG commits onto what they thought was a freebie with Wixie. But once again, the bear in the bush uh, comes flying out. Rose Thorn able to help him clean it up. The rest of AoE, they were clicked, quick to collapse. I mean, this is... Like, Wixie is completely dead to rights here, at least seemingly, but a good flash a really out of the flag, flag and drag, and Breezy was behind him. That's a huge shutdown, and by the way, he gets hit again by a dredge line that he probably has no business getting hit by, but honestly, Rosethorn is doing a great job of drawing the attention of the rest of DSG and not allowing them to commit into the choke. And what's crazy is Wixie doesn't have an enchanter with him. He, he doesn't no. have any, like, he's, he's literally just Hemothy. He's just standing there and <laughs> shooting his guns, and he somehow is alive. 
And that's the thing about Wixie Breezy. That's why we wanted to put a lot of focus on these two guys for AOE. They have been the brightest stars, it feels like, for this roster. And Wixie as a whole has been on a redemption slash revenge arc for the last year, it feels like. And finally getting his due reunited with Breezy. And it does feel like this is the game where, you know, this was all of our fears with AOE perhaps coming into the series. Where Wixie and Breezy have been really, really good. And I think even though Breezy, he's not having his best game so far, Wixie is in a great position. But it's the consistency of the rest of the team. I think Zamudo, Rosorn, and Onat have struggled a little bit in this game. Some of those mid-jungle 2v2s didn't go their way. Onat, I think it's fair to say that Tenacity has had his number in this matchup. And... Yeah, I mean, oh, Zamudo, nice he thought there was a gank coming, but he went and saw that there was two more members of DSG on his back. He's just going to get taken out here in the end by Young. There is Rose Thorn ulting out of the back of the bear pit, and DSG turned their eyes on the big purple worm. And, and I get it. Zamudo thinks he has his team behind him, but DSG is just first on the rotation. A really nice cast yet again from Tenacity, and now the Baron getting started up. Wixie, it's all on you, big dog. What can you do to try to save the game? Boom with the hook on a Rose Thorn. Rose Thorn can't even get in the pit, and there he goes down the bear. Turned into a bear skin rug there, apparently. And Breezy's in the pit, but he's going down too. I don't know what kind of rug you can turn AoE into, but they're being turned into it right now. Wixie's all by himself. And he can't do it. He can't stand the test of time at DSG. They're off to a 6.6K lead. Yeah, DSG just slapping him with their AoE skin wallet right there, Lennon. I mean, AoE, at this point, they know if this Baron goes over uncontested, the game is probably just doomed. But Wixie, I don't think he had three completed items for this fight. And nobody else on the team is strong. It was all on him. Rose Thorn. He felt compelled to do something, no way into the pit other than to die. Breezy has no follow up in the engage, and Poom walking forward, not allowing AoE to walk up and ensuring that they can clean up the rest of these kills. I mean, health bars were low. It's just, he's not strong enough. Not enough juice in the tank here yet for AoE. Now they find themselves on a serious back foot. They can't even be in their own jungle there. Rose Thorn able to sneak away a little bit, but DSG with this full power team comp all at two items, almost on three. They're trying to break down the base permanently of AoE. You know who is on three? We could get the, the young zoom in again maybe because that is a really fed karma. Six, zero, and five. The only returning member from DSG's championship roster. Look at how pretty those butterfly wings are. With the three items, Young, he's looking stylish and he's looking like he could murder you this game too. I think the uh, biggest thing for Young is his mindset doesn't really falter. I, I think that's been the proudest thing I've seen from him is he, no matter what, even when things were going so badly early in the split for them, you check into his streams, he's still saying thank you, he's still being very grateful to DSG as a whole, but also very happy for the opportunity and keeping a smile on his face. And uh, DSG, they're going to be smiling with this almost 9k lead at 25 and a half minutes. If I'm DSG's coach too, like I'm smiling after this game because this is the kind of game where you watch your team play and it's like, Oh my god, why don't we just do this every game? Because it has been really clean. Team has played together, and again, that has been where the growing pains have lied for DSG to split. And when it looks like they're playing together, they're on the same page about the plays, Perry and Young in particular linking up for so incredibly much. That is a great sign for a growing team heading into playoffs. And... I think also when we return to the conversation of AoE, you know, between fourth and eighth with a win or a loss, uh, you know, it means a lot for AoE to find some consistency here, and they are consistently finding that they are going up against a brick wall for DSG. And now on a siege, Rose Thorn on the side might just get caught by the end of the chain. Actually gets away at the last second there with the turnaround from Young, but the siege continues here in the top side. Cast goes Wixie! through. Wixie gets caught. The anchor has come for your life, and Wixie is down. Boom on a killing spree on the Nautilus. Anything going crazy with that one. And now the Weaver's Wall from Odaz just trying to buy some time. Are you kidding me, Tenacity? He found Wixie with the cast. He has been automatic with those ultimates. I mean, man, what a performance. Everybody on DSG firing on all cylinders. Now the inhibitor under fire in the top lane. And Lennon, they might just be able to end That's the game. It. Still 20 seconds on Wixie. They have an over 11k lead. Now they're going in. I was saying hot pot without the fire, but DSG are heating up going into the oh. playoffs. And right now they're on fire. 
here against AOE because Manui taking turrets and getting a triple kill here. The first Nexus Tower falls and DSG, they back away, but lasting damage done. Oh, and Young even eats the rocket on the back end. All right, DSG. They don't find the game, but I think for all intents and purposes, this first one is going to be a wrap. Over 11,000 in the lead as DSG, they saw blood in their eyes. They went for the dive. Good block by Breezy onto the dredge line to allow Onat to actually get a lot of DPS down in this fight. With the towers doing a lot of work, I think the saving grace for DSG is that the right people were tanking. Nasty was not, and Minui was not until he flashed in, allowing him to clean up a nice triple. Dude, I gotta give Tadassi some credit. He's, He's moving crazy. on the big yeah. dog today. Like, he is literally just finding all these little minute flash body slams, things like that. Like, it's been insane. Love to see this team firing on their mechanical cylinders as well as the team play. The DSG, they are now trying to contest this dragon that AoE have started up. And they're gonna try to fight this 5v5 with Tenacity coming over the edge. Yeah, I mean, you just get the Cataclysm here and the Moonlight Vigil comes out too. AoE are starting to separate because they don't know what to do. And I think that DSG are just going to pick this one one by one. Poom just gets caught, but he is just a bait to AoE. The rest on the Manui is pretty big. They get the cast out of Wixie here. Perry's cleaning him up. Oh. A thousand gold went over, but the base is in shambles right now. The minions are ending the game. Young's going to TP in there. And DSG, they're going to win game number one. And, and maybe the cleanest game of the split that they've had so far. DSG, they're scaling, baby. And they're looking great to start off this series. I know Toast is going to be very happy to see this start to this triumphant best of three. But DSG, they were looking for pride at the end of the season. They'll start game one with a little bit of that. I mean... Now AOE, it backs against the walls for a big swing. I mean, just so well played. And yeah, AOE, they, if they want to shake up the standings, they've got to shake up what happened in that game because I'm going to be honest, they got rolled over. Sure, Wixie got going in the bottom side of the map a little bit, but DSG came very well prepared with how to deal with Rose Thorn and Onat's volley to Leah. They were not able to get involved the way that we needed them to. And on the other side, Perry and Young, I mean, are you kidding me? The mid jungle of disguise. That was a clean game. Yeah, it feels good to see Perry and Young functioning together. Now we're going to send it to a little break. We'll be back for game number two shortly. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said, under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new Footlong Sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. With the spring regular season nearing its end, we got to talk most valuable prospect. And there's one player who has been a nightmare for his lane opponents, Scary Jerry. Now, this isn't 2023 Scary Jerry. The man has been constantly working his butt off to improve, and it shows massively in the stats. As of week six, Scary Jerry currently leads the charts with a threatening 9.4 KDA. Him and Psycho put relentless pressure in the bot lane, so much so that Scary Jerry takes first blood in nearly half of his games. He's top of the board when it comes to average kills per game at 6.5 and he also averages the least deaths in the league the kid has a lot to flex about and he continues to flex on picks such as Varus, lucian and even a pocket draven if you want bot lane brutality keep an eye on scary jerry quad has been a beast this split and for me it's been all about aggression it starts in the waning phase where he's leading all mids in cs differential at 15 and experience differential at 15. transitioning that to team fights He's leading the league in DPM. Quad is picking high damage champions, and he's playing forward, looking to be a playmaker. And as someone whose time in Korea was ruled by the narrative that he wasn't able to transition his scrim performance to the stage, we've seen nothing but Quad performing on stage this split, and that's why he's one of our frontrunners for Most Valuable Prospect. My early MVP nod for Spring Split is none other than Maryville University's jungler, Yuji. Not only has he exhibited an ability to execute high-level mechanics in tense situations, he is also exceptional at marking targets in fights and understanding what his role in said fights is. 
Couple that with his tenacious focus on getting his bot lane ahead, and Yuji has been a terror for NACL junglers to contain. Also, in case you're behind on the lore, he hails from Mongolia, and while living there, he hit challengers on the Chinese, Korean, and EU servers, before coming to NA and doing the same here, making him one of the only players ever to hit challenger in all four major servers. Lastly, we have a bit of a Dark Horse candidate. There were a lot of questions around how well Shochi would perform on another team where he wasn't getting the same level of resources, because we've seen what he can do when he's allowed to be the star of the show. He gets kills and makes plays like no one's business. But this split, Shochi has nonetheless made great strides in terms of finding opportunities to play more different styles than he's used to, and he's played more games on Talia, Orianna, and Karma this split than any of his traditional carries. Yet, he's still finding moments to shine and constantly still looking for plays. If he can continue this style of growth where we know he can be a strong carry and is able to take a back seat, he will be able to find success on any LCS team in the future. Who do you think deserves to be Spring 2024's most valuable prospect? Let us know in Twitch chat and hit us up on Twitter at Path to LCS.